Hi, John here from RotacRepair.ca. Thanks for tuning in today. This will be a continuation of the dismantling of the 582 Model 99, which is a blue head uh, that was uh, done in a previous video. Today, I want to go over determining are these parts serviceable again. Now, I've said before, if you don't measure it, you're just guessing. And I can't afford to guess, and nobody can really afford to guess. So let's get some proper specifications, some equipment set up, and let's check the different components in this engine and find out if there's is it still serviceable or not. This position is empty in here because the rotary shaft has been removed. I've dismantled all of the components individually. The shaft is mounted in my V-blocks. I have my measuring device and I have specifications. So let's do a examination and find out what the result is. Printed just this one single page from the manual and I went to the wear limit section and I added this information right here. So this says that our maximum deflection is 0 0.0019. So one thou and nine tenths. So that's how much deviation that we get. Up in the number one here, it says that I want to check it for deflection at position number one. So what I'll do now is, just for your viewing pleasure, I will make, here is the mark where number one is, and number one is right here. So th that's where we'll be inspecting this shaft. There's our indicator mark that I marked, and I already have the dial indicator located there. The dial indicator isn't zeroed, but for the purposes of this, it doesn't matter because I just want to see what its total travel is. So you rotate the shaft and we're watching the needle and it does not move at all. And there, see, it does work. Okay, so there's no movement there at all. Now we'll change positions here and... And I'll rotate again, and the, mirror, the uh, face is not very visible. Let me move this. There we go. Okay, so I'm on the other mark, and there's no needle movement whatsoever. See, and it does work. So there's zero deflection in the shaft. The next inspection is going to be step number two, which is we're going to uh, check the uh, contact face for the oil seals. So let's do that right now. And that position is right here, right beside the, these teeth and right before the end of the shaft. So this position right here, let's move this over a bit. So this little, I don't know if you can see, there's a little witness mark on there where the seal, this one, that separates the rotary shaft case from the rotary valve intake system. This is a very important seal. So inspecting, and I don't see anything wrong with that surface at all. That looks fine. It's a visual inspection. Then we'll move down to the this end, and let's look at this surface right here. All along, it looks fine. There's a couple of little marks right here. This has a ceramic type seal in it. So that is not an issue whatsoever. In some of the old ones that had a rubber seal, it would actually wear a groove in here. Okay, so that's step number two. So far, we're looking good. So step number three, inspect the splines where the bronze gear um, goes on for any excessive movement. So here's the, I call it the brass gear. Fits on. It slides freely, which it needs to do. It's very important. And then I want to check this way to see, and I can barely feel any movement there. So that that is exactly what I want to see. That's nice. Step number four, the helical teeth of the rotary valve gear. So that's these teeth right here. Uh, we want to look and see if there is any uh, damage to the teeth. Um, they visually look perfect. Where there could be some damage is if this uh, compression spring, which is this spring right here that goes on the shaft uh, when it's assembled, if it's 
uh, damaged weak uh, it will it potentially can make it chatter around for lack of a better description and, and make wear on here I don't see any wear so we're good for there next on the list step number five we want to measure the free height of this spring so the specification in inches is 0.988 so 988 thou so I'm going to use my vernier here to get it where you can see it and it's kind of hard to measure a spring but it stays in there by itself right there and I would take that at exactly one inch so let me go a couple of thou more yeah, and it tries to fall out Well, my final on this is, it is definitely more than 988,000, so it's still good. Final on this, number six. You want to check the O-ring, which is this one right here. It serves as a, a bumper, they call it a damper, behind this gear so that it doesn't bang onto the spacer. So there's a little cushion in between. And that's it right there. The... This comes with a, in a new gasket set, so no inspection for me. It looks fine, but it's going to go in the bin. Moving on to the pistons, we need to find out if the diameter of the piston is within specs. How are we going to determine that? Well, we're going to have to measure it from this point right here. That point right there, according to this, is 800 thousandths of an inch from the bottom to this point. So here is one that I previously marked. So I measured up 800 thousandths of an inch from here and made my magic marker mark there. That's the point that I'm going to measure this piston at. So there is my mark. I want this magic marker spot to correspond to where I'm measuring from. So as you can see, there's clearance there. I'm happy I'm in the right position. And I'm 90 degrees to the wrist pin. And right there, I'm gonna lock it. So that is a perfect measurement. Now let's read it and find out what we have. So what is the dimension that we have arrived at? Well, we, we know it's two inches and we have, we'll count the hundreds across here and then the complete numbers is nine. So we're gonna go 2.9. Then in the smaller ones past the nine, we have one, two, three, so that's 75 plus what's on here, 85, 86, 87. So 87 and because it's in between I'm going to move this here and I'm going to see what lines up on the back side and it appears that 5 does. So that piston diameter is 2.9875. Now we need to measure the cylinder that that piston came from. So I've adjusted the micrometer and locked it to the diameter of a standard cylinder. Now we're going to set up the gauge to measure the cylinder. What I'm looking for here is to zero my meter. And I have that, so I'm happy. Now I'm going to carry on and measure the cylinder. So where do we want to measure the cylinder from? Well, there's three places. There's a measurement here, which is 200 thou from the top, and then 200 thou above this little cutout on the exhaust port right here. And then again, across here, 200 thou above this cutaway for the, uh, the spigot cutaway. So let's carry on and take the dimensions at these positions and see what kind of numbers we get. So let's insert our bore gauge 
in and see what we get for a reading on the top. So minus two tenths. Well, this is the piston diameter was two inches, 987 and a half thousandths. The cylinder, I was of course measured at the top and I'll call it the middle and the bottom and then 90 degrees to that again. So what are my results? Here's the numbers. Uh, this one, two inches, 992 and eight tenths. So this is two tenths under what I set the bore at. I set the gauge at two inches, 993. Now the new bore, there's a tolerance in it because it's a production engine. So the new bore, the smallest the new standard size would be is 2.9925. And then the range, of course, then goes to 2.9929. So when I measure these, I just use for even numbers, it's just simpler, uh, 2.993 for my standard red piston bore size. Now, uh, moving along here, uh, these are all the numbers that I got. It's well within tolerance for outer round uh, an hourglass, so uh, we can have the cylinder where it's bigger, smaller in the middle. Um, it can be bigger at the bottom and smaller at the top. It's tapered. This is fine for all of that as well within spec. So I, I just average these numbers out. So this is where I got the average, and then a 90 degree average right here at two inches, nine, nine, two, and eight tenths. So I'm going to use the smallest number because I'm after piston to wall clearance. So my cylinder bore number I'm using is that, is 2.9928 in thousands. And then when you take our piston size right here and we're gonna subtract that from the bore size and it leaves us with the result is, is 0053. So five and three tenths thousandths piston clearance the average new clearance piston to cylinder wall is averages out at 0 0.003 thousand seven inch there's a little bit a little bit higher and a little bit lower but that's a good average and we're at um, five thousandths and three tenths so excellent so here we are with the pto piston this is the one with the striations on it um, you can see them right there. Then when I rotate it around and look at the other side, there is an indication as well here. And that's towards what we call a four corner seizure, which, you know, you'd think is from, you know, too cold and all these other things. Well, it can happen from too hot. And this cooling system, this loop here that's supposed to take the air out is not correct. Uh, it's likely why it did this. It's a wonder it must it was right on the edge of seizing up I do believe when I when I see this it was I don't know how many tenths of a thousandths away from um, Expanding away the rest of the clearance and just jamming up the piston and stopping so this cooling system issue Has to be dealt with it's going to need whatever it takes to revamp the cooling system so that we actually get the air out of the cylinder head to the highest point. Of course, there's still many more components that need to be measured for this engine here uh, to do a full inspection on it. It needs to be able to run to the next cycle of inspection. So in other words, if this engine had, we've got our 300 hours, if it had 150 hours, I need to be assured that all of the parts that go back in it will take it another 150 hours to get it to the 300 hour mark. This engine, however, uh, nobody knows how many hours are on it. Uh, I think it's quite low. However, when this one goes back together, I need to make sure that all of these parts have enough usable wear left on them to do the 300 hours. So that's what I'm looking for on this engine. Uh, so uh, as, uh, as I say, if you don't put a number on it, you're just guessing. We don't want to guess. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all these other things, please. You never know. One day, I may hit my 1,000 subscribers, and then, well, I don't know what happens when you get 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> anyway, thanks again. Bye now.